Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, hi my name is Madeline and I am so happy that you are here today. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. Today I am going to be doing another come to church with me video. You guys really loved this the first time. It's actually one of my most popular videos on my channel so I thought I would do another one for Vlogmas. So if you are new, I live in downtown Indianapolis for college and I go to Traders Point Christian Church on the downtown campus. I believe there are five different campuses in the Indianapolis area on all different sides of Indy so if you live in Indy you probably have one near you but I have absolutely loved going to Traders Point that was something that was a priority for me when I came to college was to find a good church that lined up with my beliefs and lined up with my home church's beliefs as close as possible obviously every church is going to be a little different when you get down into like the nitty-gritty of their beliefs and stuff Traders Point is pretty spot on so I have absolutely loved going there I will link their website down below and you can actually look at what their different morals and beliefs are. I feel like that's something that's super important when it comes to choosing a church. You want to make sure that they line up with what you believe. The first step of getting ready for church is, of course, making a coffee. So we are going to go ahead and do that. And I have my coffee here with me. So after that, we are going to go ahead and get ready. I take you guys through my makeup in a separate clip, but my hair, I just did these low little buns because it is hair wash day and my hair is a little bit gross, but I decided to try to do something cute with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take you guys through the makeup. All right, you guys, so I am just going to show you what products I'm using and then go ahead and like take you through the makeup so for primer we are going to be using the elf poreless putty primer i just have this in the shade sheer for foundation we are going to be using fenty beauty pro filter soft matte longwear foundation i have the shade 320. for concealer i'm going to be using the clinique even better all over concealer i am in the shade c and 40. i'm just going to be using a real techniques beauty sponge for powder i'm going to be using the airspun loose face powder for brows, we are using Charlotte Tilbury's Brow Lift in the shade Taupe and the Brow Fix Clear Brow Gel. For eyeshadow, I'm just going to be using my Billion Dollar Beauty Box. I have four shades in here that I use. I have the shade Caramel, Rustic, Hickory, Golden. So I'm using these four shades today for my eyes. For bronzer, I'm going to be using Sugar's contour mini bronzer in the shade o2 woody wonder and i'm just going to pair that with the blush from the same brand in the shade peach peak for highlighter i'm going to be using ofra madison miller's highlighter in the shade sea shimmer for setting spray i'm going to be using elves makeup mist and set for mascara i'm going to be using this Too faced better than six little travel size for eyeliner i'm going to be using maybelline master precise all day liquid liner just in the shade black. For lipstick, I'm using this NYX Liquid Suede Lipstick, shade Sandstorm. So those are all of the products I'm going to be using for today's little get ready with me. So I'm going to go ahead and start the time lapse. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my outfit for today. This top is from Saved by Grace Boutique. I absolutely love it. It's like Dalmatian print, as you can see. Super cute. This belt is just from TJ Maxx. I need a black belt, actually, because this belt does not match this, but it's the only one I own right now. And then these jeans are Levi's. I actually got these at TJ Maxx. They are a lot cheaper at TJ Maxx, and they are from Levi's, but I don't know what style or anything these are, but they're just skinny levi's and then i have some black booties i am not 100 percent where these are from honestly probably tj maxx that's like half of my closet is tj maxx i can never tag my clothes for you guys because that is legit where i 
get pretty much everything. This necklace Ian got for me, I believe it is on Amazon. They have a bunch of different styles and stuff and colors. These earrings right here are from Claire's. These other little ones are from Amazon. And then these are actually um, real diamonds. I got them for my 18th birthday, I want to say. That is what we are wearing today. And that is pretty much the entire process of getting ready for church. I am about to leave, it is 8.42, church starts at 9.15 and I don't live super far away so I leave around 8.45 so I can get a good seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and when I get back, I am gonna show you what I take with me. My Bible is actually in my car so that's why I'm not doing that beforehand. And then I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about the sermon and kind of an overview of what we talked about today. I am gonna go ahead and go on to church hi friends i am now back from church sorry if you hear the cars and stuff outside i'm trying to not talk when they're super loud but i do live in downtown i'm trying to make this like super casual like not anything super formal so go ahead and grab your big fuzzy blanket grab your iced coffee sit down let's have let's have a moment here what i take to church with me so i bring my purse and a coffee usually um and then my bible bag which i'm gonna show you guys what i have in it this is just from 31 i'm gonna be honest i don't like it um i need to buy a new one i just haven't there's an outside pocket that i don't keep anything in i'm seeing if i have randoms oh i do have stuff in here okay. i have some post-it notes which i do use and then i have an extra mask i have little tabs for notes and stuff so in the big compartment i have my bible obviously this is a zondervan artisan bible you can find these on amazon i don't remember if you can find this exact print if you can i will link it down below um it is on amazon in general or you can order it off of their website and then i just have pink tabs um and then like lots of post-it tabs and stuff but i love this bible we're gonna open to a random page because you can take notes and stuff on the side. As you can see, this page is not very fun. We'll go to one with lots of journaling and stuff. I know John is kind of... So like, I like to do different Bible journaling and notes and stuff just from different places in the Bible that I study. I have lots of Bible art in here. I love doing that. Love this Bible, highly recommend it. I also have a little notebook just to keep notes in. This one is from TJ Maxx. It just says Proverbs 3.5 on the front. And yeah, it's just got all of my sermon notes in it. And then I have my little marker, highlighter, pencil, pen, little pouch I use. Or like Zebra, I think is the brand midliner. Bible highlighters, I have pens from For the Girl. I just have regular Sharpie highlighters, and then I have the Papermate flare pens. I have tons of those, so that is what all is in this little pouch. I have clearly way too many because this is a huge pouch. That is all that I keep in my Bible bag. I don't take too much with me. I guess we will hop into what today's service was about before I start. I am not a preacher in any sort of way. Um, I've never led like a Bible study, anything, like never had any sort of like preaching role. So I am not the best at like explaining what the sermon was about. And I feel like stuff like this makes me a bit better at it. So um, bear with me. I'm gonna try to tell you all what church is about today. Oh, I know we read a little bit of Luke chapter two and Matthew chapter one, and I actually have been reading Luke for the 24 days of Luke challenge. Um, I've talked about that in a couple other videos, but if you have not seen those, 24 days of Luke is a challenge in December. It starts the first, honestly, you can start whenever, um, but there's 24 chapters in Luke. So if you read one every day from the first to the 24th by Christmas Eve, you will have read Jesus's life story. I just like that because I feel like it's a perfect way to get into the Christmas spirit, form the habit of being in your Bible every day, and it's just, if you don't read your Bible a whole lot, I feel like it's a great way to kind of like get your toes wet with it, if you know what I mean. So we started in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, which since it's just 10 verses, I'm going to read it to you guys. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while they always got to have the names in there. Quirinius, I think that's right, 
was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping to watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And that last verse is kind of what this year's little Christmas series is about, is about how Jesus is for all the people. Jesus' story brings great joy for all the people. Just overall that Jesus is for everybody. And we kind of talked a bit about Mary and Joseph's circumstances, how Mary was not married, she was a virgin and was pregnant. And in that time that like you'd be killed for that. Like that was a really bad thing. Joseph, on the other hand, like his girlfriend was pregnant and they weren't married. That was just such a shameful thing, punishable by death in that time. And we talked about how Mary and Joseph probably felt a lot of shame, even though they knew what the story was, but like, who was gonna believe a crazy story like that? Which obviously was true, but like, just being like, oh, I'm pregnant, but, it, but it's God's baby, like, it's okay. That is just a crazy story, and I have a feeling that not a lot of people really believe them, and so I'm sure they were the talk of the town. We talked about how they felt alone, again because they had this crazy story they had done something done something according to everyone else had done something terrible but they felt that their lives had been disrupted and basically it tied into how god meets you in your disruptions your loneliness and your shame and that he loves you no matter what he's going to meet you where you are and he wants a relationship with you, he loves you. And we also talked about how Jesus did not have the best family tree either. Um, if you go and read, I believe it's in Matthew chapter one, where genealogy starts, um, lists everyone from Abraham leading all the way up to Jesus. If you go through and look at the different people in here and go back and read the stories, there were liars, adulterers, prostitutes. If you think you've done something bad, then God can still use you. He forgives you. He loves you. Even Jesus's own family tree involved people that had sinned. The, where that tied in was that Jesus came from sinners for sinners. Like you aren't too much of a sinner for Jesus. He loves you no matter what. You are never too far gone for God's grace. God's grace covers any sin you could ever do. Which ties back into the main part of the sermon about how Jesus is for all the people. And I feel like that is, that's just my little cliff notes version of the sermon that we had today. Like I said, I'm not the best at this. And like I take notes and then I read the back later. And I'm like, why don't I sound like my minister did when he said this? I hope you enjoyed this quick little church chat with me. You guys really like these videos. My first one I did did really well. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I think I'm going to go ahead and end today's video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so that I know. Leave a comment down below and subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow.